Get your game face on. Get your game face on. And welcome Get to the Game, game Face, face SFNL Division on. 2 to 10 Netball Show. How are you, Hugh? I'm quite well, thank you, Mac. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, obviously, a really wet day at the courts on Saturday, so um, some interesting results across the board. Um, but as always, a massive thank you to our sponsors, Benio Bank Caulfield Park, Sports Performance Tracking and Swivs Locker. Um, and some news, Hugh. Yes, uh, we've got a few milestones uh, from Mordialic Netball Club, four of them actually. 50 games coming up in this coming round for Brooke Davies of the Div 2 side, Brodie Zealand from Division 5, and the Division 7 pair of Sophie Titkin and Tilly O'Toole. Well done, ladies. Yeah, so very exciting <coughs> there from the Mordialic camp. Um, and also Saturday was um, Bentley's Pride Cup. Um, so some really bright colours going on at, on the show court. And what a really court good two. day it was. Yeah. It, 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 especially given the wet weather, it's good to see a bit of brightness out on the court. Yeah, we had some colours on the goalpost. Um, they were also had the rainbow bibs and socks. I mean, even rocking some face paint in the wet conditions, which was amazing to see and um, really great to see the unity that Bentley had and also how passionate they were about Pride Round and um, all that it mm. means to the league. So that was for their Division 4 and 8 team. So well done, Bentley. And uh, we've had a bit of uh, correspondence from head office uh, that some of the behaviour on the court and also at the side of the court is not really as we would like it at the moment. And uh, look, I'm not going to go into great detail on this, but uh, look, we know a few things are not as we'd like them with shortage of umpires and things like that. All we're saying is for the next three rounds and for the finals, let's worry about celebrating great netball rather than uh, worrying about uh, what's happening at the court and being all shirty with each other. Yeah, so a bit of a call to pull your socks up and let's enjoy the last three, four rounds. Be they there rainbow is. or otherwise. Exactly. Um, so <coughs> let's start with our recap of results. So, so, so for Division 2, what games were interesting there, Hugh? Well, Heather and St Kilda City was, was a really good one. Um, St Kilda City uh, probably won't play finals, Heather at top. Uh, and this was close all day. 31-29 was the final margin. Heaven looked like they'd run away from it uh, with it. Uh, St Kilda City uh, came right back to them in the last quarter, but just couldn't get over the line. Now, a very interesting one a bit further down the list. Uh, Oakley District 5, Caulfield 34. What happened there, Mac? Um, I think we just hit the ground running and uh, the wet conditions sort of suited our game. Mm. So very fortunate there. But um, looking at the ladder, it's super close in Division 2 and probably the closest in the whole league at the moment. So we have Heatherton 32, Caulfield 30, Murrumbina 28, Oakley District 24. And still in contention, possibly, we have Dingley on 19. So um, really interesting top five there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Heatherton, Caulfield, possibly um, the, the favourites at this point, but I know that Murray and Bain are desperate to get to Div 1, so they're really looking to, to push it for the last three weeks and for the finals. Yeah, and in a couple of weeks, Heatherton and Caulfield play off in the final rounds, so ah. um, that will also impact mm. the ladder there, so really interesting to see. Uh, leading goal scorers Div 2, uh, Bianca Warris Carstensen from Dingley, 336. Liv Morris from Heatherton, good shooter, this girl, 224. Yeah. And Lynn Moyes, who you'd know a lot about, uh, Mac from Caulfield, 209. Yeah, just a really reliable shooter for us. So um, clearly there for the leading goal scorers, but um, anybody's game. Um, and looking at the rounds this week, some sort of Games to keep an eye out for. We have Murrumbina v St Kilda City. So um, that will be really interesting there. And mm. I think will be the round of the, the, the game. Round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a bit of a tongue twister. Um, so, yeah, I think that will really impact the ladder there. Probably looks the standout game. Mm. Uh, the rest, rest uh, top sides against bottom sides. So you'd say that would be standout. And Caulfield with the bye, which uh, prevents them from scoring any points for the weekend. Yeah, which is a bit of a mm. shame, but um, will be interesting to see how that unfolds. Um, Division 3, what games were a highlight there? St Kilda City against Dufton Eagles uh, was, the, was the big one here. Um, St Kilda City um, came uh, back from a uh, five-goal deficit at, at half-time 
and um, really came right over the top of the Eagles. And th as we'll see in the ladder at the moment, that uh, has a uh, big bearing on the on the top of the top of the tree. Um, yeah, and and look, South Yarra with a big mover as well, beating Dingley thirty nine to twenty seven. And again, we'll see. Uh, what happens in the in, in the ladder when we, we look at that one. Yeah, and I think the ladder looking at it now is sort of set with the top four. We have Myron Beaner on 36 points, as well as St Kilda City, South Yarra on 34, and Doveton Eagles 32. And um, I think with the number of mm -hmm. games we have, that's set potentially some movement among it, though. Yeah, and that loss to St Kilda um, basically dropped Doveton from second to fourth. So yeah. uh, showing how tight it really is. It is very tight at the top. Uh, leading shooters, Division 3, uh, Jarrah Thompson from Murrumbina, 273. Kelsey Ede uh, from Cheltenham, uh, 247. And they played each other against each other on the weekend and uh, had a real shootout in that particular match. Erin Wolfenbottle from um, Dufton, 212. And again, she had a very good day this week. Yeah, and um, looking at <coughs> the next round, so this weekend, some interesting games there, but... Um, just shows how tight Div 3 is. St Kilda v South Yarra, second v third. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't get any uh, easier for St Kilda City at the moment. No, and um, will really affect the ladder there. So that's a game to watch for sure. Um, Division 4, what was our game result that impacted the ladder the most to you? Well, probably the upset of the year in Division 4. Uh, Morty Alec defeating East Brighton, 13-11. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the games that was uh, called off at half-time. Um, Mention uh, best on court from Audiolic to Yarn Wills, who kept uh, Felicity um, uh, Felicity Dawkins to just nine goals. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see with the leading goal shooters what sort of an effort that was. Um, oh, and that that was really the main game. CPL um, skipped two games clear uh, with their win. So uh, yeah. Yeah, and really interesting laddie here for Division 4. We have CPL on 38 points, East Brighton 30, Springvale District 28. And here's the interesting one of Clayton, St Kilda City and Morty Alec all on 20 points. So it's a percentage battle there. So um, their games in the next couple of rounds are really going to be vital for them. Clayton and St Kilda City lost on Saturday and that brought Morty Alec right into the, the, the equation. Also Heatherton just below them on 18 points, just two points yeah. further back. So I'm um, sort of showing there that potentially having top five could be really beneficial. Well, for again, yes. Um, and our Division 4 leading goal scorer is Hugh. Felicity Dawkins. Yeah. Would you believe 431 for East Brighton? Uh, Kimberly Harrison, 347, which would win just about every other division for CPL. And it's no uh, coincidence that they're the top two sides. And uh, Jordan Elgin from Heatherton, 247. Yeah, so pretty clear win uh, lead there and potential win. Um, mm -hmm. So Division 4 for this Saturday, um, the upcoming games, interesting to see East Brighton and Karen Patterson Lakes playing against one another. I think that will make for a really interesting game. Yeah, but the other very interesting one is uh, St Kilda City v Clayton, Clayton. who are two of, the, yeah. two of the three sides on 20 points. Uh, Morty Alec have a very winnable game against Keysborough. Uh, so really that, Look, it's going to go down the wire, isn't it? Yeah. A hmm. um, bit of a percentage battle, that's for sure. Now, Division 5 results. Some close games here. Yeah, well, uh, Lindhurst uh, broke into the top four this week with a 47-36 win over Dingley. Um, and uh, the other interesting one, another half game, uh, which was Aspendale 13 being, beating Hampton 12. Yeah. It was close all day. And uh, that basically lets Lindhurst into the four at the expense of Hampton, as we'll see in a moment. Yeah, so looking at the ladder, we have Caulfield on 34, um, Doveton Eagles 30, Aspendale Arrows also on 30, Lindhurst 28, and then we have Hampton 26, and potentially still in the mix, South Yarra 24. So um, really tight top six there. Watch South Yarra because um, they have a good enough attack to match any side in this division. Yeah. So it'll uh, be interesting to see. And looking at the leading goal scorers, um, we have a clear leader from Dingley. Yeah, Nicole Carmeny, uh, 391. Uh, Jodie Brown, who is... A mama the, bear? The mama bear at, at the top of the uh, tree in just about every season, 282. Mm. Kate Shevlin, very, very good shooter, this girl. 
from South Yarra, 266. Um, so interesting there. And looking at the Division 5 games for this weekend, um, will be really interesting with the tight ladder, but um, some games that could make an upset. Yeah, look, um, South Yarra, Hampton um, have uh, very winnable games. Lindhurst have the bye. Yeah. Um, Doveton v Dingley, you'd think Doveton would win that one. Uh, Aspendale, though, in third against Caulfield in, in, in first. Oh, so that is going to be... The game well, to watch. The game to watch. It's a real youthy experience, that game. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, yes, no, that'll be very interesting. Um, now, Division 6 results. Some close results here and obviously some half games played. Um, but, yeah, what was our game to watch out well, for? Well, probably the most interesting game was a game that wasn't played, um, <laughs> which was um, Caulfield forfeiting against Parkdale Vultures. Yeah. Um, now, that is uh, third v fourth, and it allows Vultures to draw level with Caulfield. Um, but... Probably the best game of the day was between the bottom two sides, uh, East Brighton v Lindhurst. One point. And this was neck and neck all day, with each side having their share of the time in, in the lead. Um, East Brighton just bobbed their head at the right, right time and, uh, and got across the line. So well done to them. Yeah, um, and a really tight top four, top five here even. We have Heatherton on 30, Murrumbina 26, Caulfield and Parkdale Vultures both 24 and Springvale District 22. So um, potential for Dubs and Eagles to make a move, but our top five nearly cemented. Mm. Our Division 6 leading goal scorers. Verity Shepherd, another evergreen uh, at the top of the ladder, 254. Uh, Dale Egan from Hyatt, 188, and Sarah Borland, who I know they have very high hopes for um, going forward at Murrumbina, 184. Yeah, so interesting to see the big lead there. Our Division 6 um, lineup for this weekend, um, I think it will be interesting to see Heatherton v Caulfield, um, some top of the table games there, and I think yes. that will probably be the, probably be the match to watch. Mm. Moambina having the buy as well, which um, will impact it. Which which gives Caulfield, uh, if they can beat the top side heaven, or Parkdale Vultures uh, who play East Brighton, uh, who are second last, gives them the gives them the chance to go past uh, Moambina. So, yes, be, uh, this one's an interesting division. Um, yeah. It really could go a number of of, of different ways. Um, I'm not counting out Dufton Eagles yet either, just quietly. Yeah, so uh, they're just hanging on there hmm. in sixth, I think. Yes, yes. And look, with uh, a few late wins, they could just upset the apple cart. Yeah, so moving now on to Division 7 results. Um, a lot of half games played here. So um, we have a draw, which is interesting to see from Morty Alec and Springvale District. So 27 all. Mm -hmm. um, Springvale took the early lead and held it for just about the whole day, but uh, Tilly O'Toole from uh, Morty Alec um, had a uh, clutch shot with uh, 10 seconds to play and that drew the game and, and that gave Morty Alec a share of the points. Um, and probably the game of the rounds. And looking now at the ladder, so we have Hampton on 42, South Yarra 36, Heatherton and Sky on 24, and potential still up in the mix would be St Kilda City 19 and Springvale District 18. Um, looking at the leading goal scorers, um, pretty close still. Pretty close, yes. Uh, Elisa Heitman, who scored 39 on the weekend, which is a good return in those conditions, 248 goals. Uh, Alethea Lingham from uh, St Kilda, 223, and Gillian Burdack from South Yarra, 208. And looking at the games for this week for Division 7, um, some really interesting ones, but I think Hampton v South Yarra will be one to keep an eye on for sure. It's the one we've been waiting for, isn't it? It's, yeah. It really is um, the... Uh, the top of the table clash. You'd think it was a grand final work. dress rehearsal, really. Potentially um, could be. St Kilda City um, do need to beat Heatherton uh, to stay in the race. Yeah. Um, and um, Sky having Hallam, um, who really are uh, one of the uh, one of the low markers. You'd think Sky would win that. So um, look, there's a lot on that game. 
Yeah, and our Division 8 results, so um, again, some half games and full games, so making a really interesting mix. But one that was interesting and nice and close was the Caulfield Doveton Eagles game with Doveton Eagles coming away with the win. Um, but, yeah, some really solid netball there. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was quite an entertaining, well, half a game because yeah. it was called off at halftime. Uh, Dingley, uh, the top side, played at the 10.30 time slot and yeah, that sort of Lindale. accounts for their 67-22 win over Lindale. Uh, South Yarra absolutely obliterated St Paul's, 28-2. Um, Dingley, South Yarra, the runaway leaders in this particular uh, grade. So, uh, that's yeah, that's cool. probably to be expected, really. Yeah, and looking at the ladder, we have Dingley, 36 points. South Yarra, 34 Cheltenham and Dandenong and Doveton Eagles, 24. And potentially still in the mix, Frankston Dolphins, 18. So um, real tight battle for fourth there. Looking at the leading goal scorers, um, pretty low scoring for leading goal scorers across the board, but very mm. close still. Yeah, well, a couple of names well known to SFNL watches at the top of this uh, leaderboard, both from Dingley. Uh, Melissa Aids, 167. Penny Byers, Tims, 158. Uh, making out the top three, Jesse Bound from Cheltenham, 156. Uh, again, still a chance to, to uh, take the top goal. Yeah, and looking at um, the games coming up for Saturday for Division 8, um, some really interesting ones to come away with, but um, it'll be interesting to see those teams that are fighting for fourth. Yeah, Doveton have got the uh, difficult one against South, South Yarra. Yarra. Uh, Cheltenham and Dandenong uh, both have uh, lower place clubs, so you'd think they'd be favourites there. Um, Dingley, again, taking all before them um, against Bentley. Really, it's Dingley and South Yarra for the top two, but the, the real race is for the uh, third, fourth and fifth. Yeah, and looking at Division 9 results here, some really close games across the board for Division 9, but I think one to note, Oakley District... Um, V Murrumbina and Murrumbina just coming away with a one goal win there. Um, yeah. And that game was interesting to see play, just some really strong netball happening. Mm. Well, that game actually, whereas most games got called at half time. They kept playing. Well, that game actually got four minutes into the third yeah. quarter and then they called it from there. Um, didn't really affect the result. Murrumbina were in front at half time yeah. and in front uh, in the third quarter when, it got, uh, when the pin got pulled. But the really interesting one here. Parked uh, was parked out yeah. against Lindhurst. Now, Lindhurst has not registered a, a competition point all season. Yeah. Uh, Parkdale are uh, right in the mix, and Lindale took it right up to Parkdale all day. Uh, they um, Vultures took the lead early, but they couldn't shake Lindhurst off. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Lindhurst just didn't have the... The, the polish of the poise to take the lead in the last quarter and just finish two goals short. But a really fine display by the Lindhurst girls in this game. Yeah, and looking at the ladder, um, pretty clear top four. We have Hampton 38, Hampton Park 34 and Parkdale Vultures Murrumbina 32. Um, there might be some changes amongst that, but top four definitely Before set. set, yeah. Um, looking at our leading goal scoring, um, very close still for this division. Can you pronounce that top one? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Uh, Brooke <laughs> Wiramanadon, I yeah. think sorry is right. Sorry if we've mispronounced it. Sorry, sorry if we've mucked that one up, but she's from Altley District and she's uh, scored 234 goals. Uh, Amelia Perkins from Parkdale Vultures, 221. Sandra Dwelly from Black Rock, 213. Um, and looking at the Division 9 uh, fixture for this week, um, as we said, top four pretty set, um, but it will be interesting to see how a couple of those games go. Hampton Murrumbina, first yeah. v fourth. Um, Hampton Park v Parkdale Vultures, second v third. Yeah, so definitely the two games to keep an eye on. Yeah, and, and, and again, uh, it's close enough at the top that um, any particular side can, can move in any direction within that top four, so... Yeah, I'm um, looking now at our last division, Division 10. Um, now, interesting to see two draws here. I believe potentially they were agreed. They were, yeah. Um, forfeits. They, they, they um, were agreed so draws. So, only three games to really look at here. But um, one that pulls a bit of interest is Danny Nong v Oakley District. And um, Oakley District coming away with a win, but um, very close game for sure. Yeah, well, well, this was top v bottom. Yeah. You, you, you wouldn't 
on the, know it, but it was level at quarter time. Uh, Oakley took a three goal advantage into the, uh, out of the second quarter. And um, that was um, the end of the game. So, so that was the result that stood. But of the three games that, play, that were played, uh, the top three all won. So not much change yeah. there uh, in anything. Um, I think the top three are set in this division, not potentially in that order, but definitely um, up there. So we have Oakley District 36, Clayton and Hampton 32. Interesting here, fighting out for fourth position, we have Heatherton, Dubton Eagles both on 20 and still in the mix, Hampton Park. So I think there's a clear divide with the top three and the next, but um, it will be interesting to see come finals who does take that fourth position. OK, leading goal sh scorers for uh, Division 10, which I know there's a lot of interest uh, in uh, out in the marketplace. Uh, Christine Donald from Keysborough, 235. Ashley Fredrickson from Clayton, 211. Madeline Morrow from Hampton, 152. Um, and looking at the Division 10 games for Saturday, um, we have Clayton v Springvale Districts Red, so potentially a win for them there. Um, but Heatherton v Dandenong, potentially close. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Could be. Dandenong, uh, in recent weeks, have uh, belied their lowly status. Yeah. They're, 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 they're giving uh, the higher sides a bit of a uh, bit of a game for it. Uh, Dufton and Hampton Park could be interesting as well. Um, two sides in the running for fourth spot. spot. Yeah. And the loser in that is in a little bit of strife, I think. Um, but, um, yes... Um, Interesting results Indeed. there. Um, so that wraps us up for the recaps on the divisions. But um, looking at the topic of the week from last week, asking about whether finals should be the top four or top five, um, some really surprising results with top five, 66 p people saying yes, um, and top four only having eight votes. So I'm, some, I'm surprised. I thought that would be a lot closer yeah. vote. Um, some interesting results there and sort of, as we said, putting the pressure on the league to potentially make a change. Hmm. Um, but going hand in hand with that, um, the question is, um, should we have teams, uh, divisions that have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 or 12 teams in it? 18. Uh, yeah, maybe 18. That's a very big division. Um, because that will obviously impact the top five uh, final series if that does happen next year. So how many teams do you think should be in each division? You could, you could have a 16-team division with every side playing each other side once. Potentially, but um, could make logistics a bit challenging there. Could do. Um, but, yeah, so I think, I think 12 is probably, from my point of view, the max you'd want in a division. I think you're um, right. If possible. All jokes aside, I think yeah. you're right. Um, if possible, and it would be nice to have divisions on even numbers so people aren't having as many buys, but again, logistical problems there. So um, we're asking you guys what you think and how many teams should be in each division. There'll be a poll up on the Game Face SFNL netball group, so make sure you're voting in, jumping into the comments there and letting us know why you think that... Um, Always good to have some feedback to give to the league. And many thanks to Will Hunter for always putting that poll up. <laughs> um, so make sure you're getting involved there. But that's it for us this week. Make sure you're joining us again next week. Um, and as always, let us know your thoughts on the show um, by looking in the comments. A massive thank you again to our sponsors, Benny Go Bank, Caulfield Park, Sports Performance Tracking and Swivs Locker. And remember, get, get your game, game face on. on. Get your game face on.